came out with like selling ice creams, drove up the road and went somewhere else. Yeah. Um, so if whoever put their sunglasses away could put them back on again, the sun will go out, the ice cream man can come back and have that for dessert. There we go. Um, so Ryan Simpson's joined us um, from Orwell's in Chip. Like, put your hand up if you've been to Orwell's. Put your hand up if you're going to go to Orwell's again because we've seen you here today. We can go now. Um, and it looks like he's cooking half a shark. Um, and I hand over to him and his glamorous assistant. Cheers, Simon. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, nice to see some regular faces. Uh, this is Kurt, my assistant. I'm not like Paul Daniels, he's just like a, just a nice little back assistant. Kurt's the restaurant manager at Orwell, so a lot of people know Kurt's face. Uh, I'm going to do two dishes for you today. Uh, one's going to be a quail dish, which I've pre prepared a little bit, and I'll tell you why. There's a lot of processes that we've put into the quail. And the other dish is the John Dory. John Dory, we're going to cook right from scratch. It's uh, my favourite fish, and again, I'll go on to tell you why. First of all, I'd like to say a big thank you to Alan, who was on before. A round of applause for Alan, please. Uh, just let you know, Rob, that that's the first time and the last you'll ever hear a chef complimenting another chef. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, also, I'm a little bit stage fright as well, because I'm not as uh, well oiled as the veterans before me, so uh, I'm just going to uh, take it easy today, okay? Uh, one last thing before we get started. If you see me acting a little bit funny on stage, funny, funny faces, and moving in a funny manner, I'm not trying to replicate the 80s uh, sort of robot dance, I've got a really bad back, okay? So just bear with me, okay? <laughs> okay, so first of all, we're going to talk about the quail dish. Uh, this is a little bit of quail that we've pre cooked first uh, in a water bath. Um, basically, it's a slow process of cooking, so we're breaking down the meat, making it a lot more tender. Um, we also brine the meat, so this is the, one of the reasons why I couldn't actually do this on stage today, because it takes at least two and a half to three hours to brine, and then we cook it for a further 12 hours in a water bath. And the same with the leg. So, the flavour, what we're trying to do in the brine, we, it's, it's like a salty solution and it's also flavoured with thyme, garlic, rosemary, and we try to enhance the flavour of the quail without losing the flavour of the quail. So, I've, I've still got it on the crown, as you can see. The quail is a French quail, okay? So, what I'm going to do, can, you, can everybody see this on the, on the camera? So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the quail just off the bone, like so. So, this is on the crown, and I'm just going to remove the crown from the quail because obviously we don't want to eat none of the bone. Just pour this over here like so. And we're going to roast it slowly in a pan. Now this dish here is a, is a real chefy dish and I heard Alan talk about chef, chefy dishes before. It's the sort of thing that we do at Orwell's. It's one of our signature dishes and it tastes absolutely fantastic. So what did you guys experience here? So we have got some plates at the front. So first come, first serve, whoever's up first. So that's the bones, so we're just taking that off the quail. Now, we're just going to score the fat just so it renders down a little bit. Just because we want it nice and crispy on the skin. Like so. Can everybody see that? And now, we don't need to season it. This is the beauty of brining. Because if we season it, we're adding more salt. So like I said, it's been salted slightly before in a water solution. It creates a thing called osmosis, where the salty water runs into the, uh, the meat. And it creates a nice, tender, juicy kind of... Uh, kind of texture into the uh, quail. So what I'm going to do now, I've got a nice hot pan. I'm just going to fry that off very, very gently. And I'm not used to these ovens, so I'm just waiting for it to warm up a little bit more. Okay, there we go. You can hear that sizzling away a little bit. And the leg, what we've done with the leg, we've removed the thigh bone, and then we've left the other part of the bone on, on the leg, so it creates kind of like a lollipop effect. So what we're going to do, we're just going to roast around the leg, take this clean film up, like so. I'm going to pop the leg in there as well. Now the idea of this, because it's been cooked for 12 hours, we don't want to overcook it too much, so we just want to crisp it up, and that's pretty much it. So we'll leave that working away now. I'm going to talk to you about the garnish that we're going to serve with that. So the garnish that we're going to serve with the quail is actually a chicken liver vinaigrette, because chicken liver works absolutely fantastic. It's kind of like a chicken taste. You've got the, the richness from the liver coming through, you've got a lot of sherry vinegar in there, a little bit of shallot. So it works quite well with the, the sweetness of the quail and the acidity cuts through and it, it, it's just a perfect marriage. So I'm just going to get this plate here and show you how I'm going to present it. And I promise to get all the chefy stuff out of the way first. I'm going to show you how to do a nice little bit of home cooking. Okay, so I'm going to pop on the plate for the quail a little bit of chicken vinaigrette. 
Okay, like so. And the way we do the chicken vinaigrette is that we actually roast the chicken livers off in a pan. We add a lot of shallots, and then we deglass, which means we're taking all the flavour off the pan with a little bit of sherry vinegar. And we let that come off the pan, and then we add a little bit of a jus, which is chef, it's like gravy, basically. So it's a beef jus, and we let it reduce down. Once it's reduced down, we we'll blitz it into a thermomix or a blender, any kind of commercial blender, and then we'll add a little bit of oil just to emulsify the, the actual chicken livers. So what we get is it's like a dressing almost, almost like a, a salad dressing. Okay, so we're just going to pop that on there. This is where I'm going to get all chefy and do some nice lines. Okay, like so. Now with this, we're also going to serve pickled mushrooms, which we serve in our restaurant. So pickles your old mushrooms, the banging season now, um, just started actually. Uh, fantastic, getting from Scotland, absolutely beautiful. Um, got a nice savoury taste towards them. And then we like to put the pickle in there again to refresh the dish. So I worked in France for around about five years of my career. And I learned as a chef, you season with salt, sugar and acidity. I worked in a very famous restaurant called the Maison Trois Gros. And there, that's where I learned about acidity and how important it is to add salt and vinegar. And that's what we do, you know, when we have our chips and things like that, we add a bit of vinegar. It's, it's just a natural, a natural seasoning that we re really enjoy. So I'm just going to take this quail off, as you can see, very, very quickly. You can see that's nicely roasted. I'm going to carry on roasting the leg, like so. I'm just going to turn the heat down for one moment. And then we're going to place the pickles and rolls on the plate, like so. So this, again, is a uh, very, very chef you can just put all this on the plate, you don't have to uh, place it the way I'm sure. <coughs> Oh, right, okay, can you see it there, can you? Yeah. Okay, right, uh, chef you plate. Okay. <laughs> okay, so the quail now is roasted up completely. And like you said, in, in a restaurant, this is, this is me demonstrating a restaurant dish. This is, this is how we operate at All Wells. We've got a lot of chefs, they're all doing different sections. Everything is pre-prepared like that in advance and we're just finishing off. So a lot of the prep and a lot of the hard work that goes behind the scenes is actually done in the preparation. And it's not the service is just like an orchestra just coming together and doing what we do best. Okay, so on that plate, we've got some lovely uh, artichokes. Can everybody see that underneath? Okay, so the artichokes have been marinated. In, again, in a little bit of uh, garlic, a little bit of oil, and they've been cooked. Uh, the baby globe artichokes, again, very much in season. So that's a big ethos of ours. And we're just going to pop them in the same pan as the quail. And we're just going to roast that off very, very gently. Okay? Get a nice bit of coloration on there. Okay, and then the next part of this dish is a nice little bit of watercress. The watercress is going to bring a little bit of uh, spice to the dish, but a nice pepperiness on the end of the watercress. And also with the leaves of the, uh, the artichoke, the inner leaves, we've actually dried them out and made crisps with them. So we fried them up and we made some lovely crisps. Again, the texture. So when we're creating a dish, we don't, we don't just like say, oh, we're going to do quail, put it with this, that, and the other. We actually think, how are we going to get some texture in there? How are we going to get this in? How are we going to pass the dish out? And we, we want the, the eating experience to be something that someone's going to really enjoy. We don't want them just, just to just put a load of mushrooms together or a load of texture because it just wouldn't work. Okay, so I'm just going to pop that on there, and we've got a nice little bit of uh, pre made jus or gravy. It's a chef y word, jus. Okay, I'm just going to pop that in there. And this is just made from chicken bones. So this is the basic part of chicken stock. It's been reduced down uh, to, to around about a litre from around about 10 litres. And then it's going to be a nice, intense chicken, sort of white, sort of poultry flavour going on. Okay? So I'm just going to pop that inside. I'm smoothed and surprisingly quite well. I think it's maybe the nerve on the stage so that's carrying me through. <laughs> okay, so just leave that ticking over there one second. Now I've got these lovely artichokes. I'm just going to place these straight from the pan onto the plate, like so. Can everybody see that? And then on the dish, we're going to put a little bit of vinaigrette into the uh, watercress. We've got homemade vinaigrette. So we're going to distribute that nice little bit of texture all over the plate. It's got these artichoke crisps that I'm going to give a nice little crunch everywhere. And we're going to pop on 
the leg, put the bottom of the leg up, so we can stand that up, like so. We'll get a little bit more shoot going, we'll just reduce that too much there. Okay. So can I have a volunteer, Michael? You're a fantastic volunteer. I know this is Mike, Michael, Michael's there, one of my wine suppliers, so he supplies fantastic wine. So if anybody wants some wine, please speak to Michael. So Michael, I want you to try this dish, I want you to tell everybody what you think to it, and if anybody wants to come and try it afterwards, feel free to afterwards, okay? So I'm just going to slice this now. And then we're going to pop a little bit of watercress on the plate. Again, it brings quite to the dish, but it also brings a little bit of freshness, and you've got a nice little bit of pepperiness on there as well. Can everybody see that's starting to look a bit like a restaurant dish now? Yeah? Is everybody still with me here? Excellent. Okay, and now we've got a lovely little bit of jus on there. Again, I think I heard Alan talk about a thing called umami before, which is another taste sense on our, on our, on our taste buds, and it's, it's a savoury, what you to keep going back, and roasted chicken's got natural umami in it, and this is what the chicken juice got in it, so we want you to keep going back and tasting it, and getting excited about the food. Okay, pop that up there. Okay, and then finally, we've created a nice little tarragon mayonnaise, so we've got kind of like a Bernays flavour going on, so we've got cold Bernays basically. And chicken, tarragon is a marriage made in heaven. So again, a nice little hunter flavour on the plate will be the, uh, the tarragon, just for the mayonnaise form. I'm just going to pop that around like so. And then we're just going to finish it with a little drizzle of tarragon oil. Again, to lift the plate and to make it a pliable restaurant dish. So there we go. Can everybody see that? Put your hand up if you'd like to try some. So I've interested some people. <laughs> okay, Michael, come and have a little try and tell me what you think. Let's go. Oh, we'll put the leave it there actually. That's the benefits of uh, actually knowing this, Michael. Okay. Okay guys, so the next dish we're going to do is the John Dory dish. Um, as you can see, it's got a nice big fresh piece of John Dory, supplied by uh, one of my favourite suppliers in the UK, which is Fly Fish, a guy called Johnny, he's a great friend of mine. So we're just going to show you how to fillet it, how to cook it, how to get the best out of the John Dory, and uh, we'll answer some questions afterwards. How was that? Lots of texture, yeah? Yeah, and you get the flavour from the quail, there's no salt on there at all, is there? You can take it home afterwards, yeah, as long as there's some left. So I'm just going to pop this down here, guys, and feel free to go up and try it after we've finished, okay? Okay, so is everybody familiar with the fish John Dory? Yeah, St. Pierre, French, yeah? Okay, so I fell in love with this fish, not this particular fish, actually, yeah. I fell in love with this species of fish when I was working in France, it's widely used over there, it's absolutely fantastic. It's a, a nice, firm, meaty fish. It's very versatile. You can put it with meat. I'm a big fan of uh, mixing fish and meat together. Things like sweetbreads, things like bacon with fish. works absolutely fine. So, as you can see, we've got the whole fish here. Can everybody see that on the stage? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to, nice sharp knife. I'm going to separate the head from the body, just like so, so there's no wastage there. Okay, and then I'm going to run the back of my the knife down the backbone. And I'm just going to ease the fish away from the bones, like so. Can everybody see that? Now a lot of people have a bit of a thing about filleting fish, but it, it's so pleasurable when you can fillet your own fish and then you can make a nice stock from the, from the bones. It's, uh, we like to use a, a lot of this here always when we take the whole, the whole species, the whole animal, the whole carcass, whether it be venison, whether it be pig, sheep, fish, and we try to use everything on the animal rather than having any wastage. So we just Ease that away, can everybody really see that okay? I'll turn that round. We're just easing the fish away from the bones and exposing that lovely white flesh. Now, it's not often you see John Dory on, on many menus. 
one, because it's very, very expensive to put it in. But it is my preferred choice of fish. If I'm going to put an expensive fish on the menu, it definitely has to be Jack Boyle. Definitely over the service, definitely over the fish. This is, this is the last bit. So you can pull that fish away, like I said. And we just take it around the other side. And what essentially you get from a John Dory, you get actually three fillets from the one. So as you can see, if I hold that up, you've got the John Dory, that's what you call the fillet. But within that, you've got three fillets, so you've got separation, one, two, and three. So I'm just going to demonstrate that on the board now. I should pop the other half down there for my tea later. Okay, just a little more. Does anybody have any favourite fishes that they like to eat? Is it cod, paint, that sort of thing? Anybody? Monkfish. Sea bass, absolutely fantastic. Great. We've got a monkfish somewhere, I heard? Yeah, monkfish, fantastic. Again, sorry? Orange Ruffy. Orange Ruffy, where's that from? All right, okay. <laughs> so we only buy fish from the uh, from the, the British o from the British uh, Ocean, but orange roughy next time I'm in Australia, I'll try some of that. <laughs> I always like to try abalone over there. They're, they're like the scallop of the uh, Pacific. Yeah. Okay, so when you fill it to the fish, you're going to go in into the flesh, and then you're just going to hold the knife still and just slowly ease away the skin. What the best technique is definitely to hold the knife still. You don't want to start pushing the knife anyway, just hold the knife still and let the knife do the work like so. So what we get is a nicely filleted, can everybody see that? Nicely filleted fish and skin, okay? Now, as you can see, what I talked about, the three fillets off the, off the John Dory, the Saint Pierre, and you've got a natural seam in the fish, and we're just going to follow the seam up there. So there's one lovely fillet, and then we're going to come down here. Take off any of the stuff that we don't know, need any sinew or anything like that. There's two, and then we'll just take off a little bit of sinew here, and then we've got three. Now, this dish, we've been developing this, this particular dish, what I'm going to do for you, uh, over the period of at least five or six years. Now, before I opened the four uh, wells with my partner Liam, we actually uh, we went to a place called the Goose of Russell where we managed to do quite well. We, we won Michigan Stars and lots of awards. And this dish was one of the dishes that uh, one of the inspectors tried, and it's, uh, it's a favourite of mine. And basically, what we do, we cook it with uh, very simple. We do brine it in the restaurant to keep the consistency, but we can put salt on today. It doesn't really make much difference, but we do brine it, and we brine it with a thing called dashi, which is a seaweed. And the seaweed, the seaweed dashi, that actually adds a lot of umami into the fish. So it keeps the flavour of the fish, but it enhances it. So it's a natural flavour enhancer. So we go less on the salt, more on the dashi, which creates a, a, a much tasty fish. Now this fish dish, we're going to, we keep it very simple, we just cook it, very very simple in the pan, and we serve it, I heard the Alan talking before about sweet and sour with fish, and it's exactly what we're going to do. Like I said, when I'm working at Twilight Road, we're going to about something called Agridu, which is sweet and sour, and we're going to use verju. Uh, has anybody heard of verju before? Okay, so it's unripened grape juice. So it's the grapes, when they're pressed, fresh straight away, unripened, bottled, and it gives a nice level of acidity, and it's quite intense. And with that acidity, we, we reduce it down to make it even more intense, and then we put it with a little bit of chicken stock, just to stop it being too vinegary. But it, it gives, instead of having lemon or lime or that sort of acidity, it gives a nice full body acidity, and that's what we're looking for. And then to finish it off at the end, to give the sweetness, we're going to be putting some sultanas in there, and then just be soaked a little bit of white wine, and we're also going to be putting some spring onion in there to add the freshness to the sauce. So you're going to have a sweet and sour, fresh sort of sauce with a little bit of texture in there from the sultanas, from the spring onion. And then to complement that, all we're going to serve it with is a little bit of marsh samphire, which is, anybody familiar with samphire? Okay, so it's asparagus of the sea. It's uh, quite salty. It's a small little bit. Small little vegetable, just like so. Can everybody see that? And it's a great texture, it's a great coming to any kind of fish dish. It's absolutely beautiful. And we're also going to be using these things called cooked melons, which we actually uh, grow ourselves. They're quite trendy at the moment. <coughs> you know, see that it looks like a little water watermelon. And basically, all it is is a, is a mini cucumber, uh, which looks like a watermelon. So, we do a lot of growing ourselves. We grow, we've got polytunnels down the ship lake. 
where we grow a lot of our own produce, we keep our own honey, we do our own honey, and uh, next year we're actually going to be keeping our own pigs. So it's, uh, there's quite a lot going on at the restaurant, and making things like that are brilliant, because you don't have to pay through the nose, because they're very trendy at the moment, we're actually growing them ourselves. And then also on this dish, we're going to be serving a thing called sea rosemary. Again, that's a little bit of salt, saltiness, and oyster leaf. So all these little bits of saltiness with the sweet, the sour, the sweetness of the fish, lots of texture, it's all going to pull together in harmony, hopefully. <coughs> and also, again, for a little bit of freshness, got a little bit of cucumber on there as well. Cucumber, simply <coughs> just chop the cucumber, nice and fresh, nice and crunchy, and again, bursts of freshness. And finally, a little bit of radish, we're going to be putting on there. And to finish it, we're going to go with the artichokes again. Because the artichokes give a nice little bit of starch on the plate, and it's, uh, it's a nice cool little fish, okay? So, just to start cooking this fish now, I'm just going to show you now. I'm just going to save my last bit of air juice, it's cooked. <laughs> okay, so, get a nice hot pan. Like so, get it nice and hot. Now, is everybody going to try this dish if I, if I cook all the fish? Yeah. I hate wastage, because so I buy these animals all in bowl and I want to use everything. Is everybody going to eat it, yeah? yeah. Sorry? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry? Yeah. Yes, thank you, thank you. Just keeping you all awake there. <laughs> Okay. Okay, so I'm going to put this a little bit small for you guys, so everybody can get a little bit. Okay. Right. There we go. The John Dory. So now all we're going to do is season the John Dory up. Get a little bit salty like John Dory. Just drain this uh, oil off here. Now, as you can see, I'm not really worried about the garnish because we've got a lot of raw garnish going on there. And if nothing else, we can cook in with the John Dory. So this is great, ideal for home cooking. So we, you know, you don't want to be at, in a restaurant. You do have all different stations where everybody's cooking it all separately. But this is the sort of thing where you can buy a bit of John Dory, buy a bit of card, a little bit of orange, so orange roughy, a little bit of mugfish. Same sort of thing. It works perfect with any fish. This kind of recipe because that sweet and sour just works absolutely brilliant. Okay, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of oil into each pan. And we're going to get a nice little bit of coloration on this dory. So we're going to season the dory up with a nice little bit of fine moldy sea salt. It probably looks like we're putting a lot of salt on there, guys. But you've got to remember, when you're a chef and when you cook, the salt is your friend. It's not your enemy. You want lots of salt because it makes the food taste nice. Okay. Not too salty. Okay, so I'm just going to pop the John Dory in like so. And if we put them in the same sort of size in the same pan, then we can cook them all around about the same time. Okay. There we go. Finish it with a little bit of salt on the reverse side. Okay, so while that's cooking away, like so, just pop this down here. We're just going to pop the artichokes into the John Dory. Did everybody see that on the camera there? Okay. It's a great one for cooking at home. And then in the saucepan, we're going to add a little bit of veggie. We're going to take the heat off the pan, otherwise we'll end up with no veggie. Okay. And like I said, this is the veggie, so it's been reduced down. It's done about this much from a 75 cl, so it's around about 75 uh, centimeters down to around about that's around about 225. Okay, and I'm going to pop that down. Veggie, so it's unripened grape juice. So it's grape juice that's not been ripened. So it's quite acidic. And then we cut it with a little bit of chicken stock just to take the edge off it. Okay, so I'm just going to pop this fish over. Now, fish does not need long cooking at all. I'm a massive fan of sushi, so if you come to Orwell's and you think the fish is slightly undercooked, I'll probably be shouting in the kitchen and say, no, that's how you're supposed to cook it. But, no, I'm only joking, I won't. But uh, it, it does need little cooking fish, because it's very, very delicate, especially John Dory. So as you can see, I've turned it over, I've got a nice coloration in there, I'm going to add a nice little knob of butter, and let it finish slowly and another little knob of butter in here and that's off the heat completely so the residual heat from the pan is actually finishing the fish 
So things like sea bass, when you cook your sea bass, nice crispy skin, turn it over, two minutes in the oven, fantastic. You don't want to be overcooking your fish at all. Overcooked fish is not nice. And the worst is halibut. The worst to experiment with is halibut, because once you start trying to cook halibut to perfection, it's dead easy to overcook. Because it's really, it's really, really, it's really, really dry, it's very, very delicate. Okay? So you know a good restaurant when you've got halibut on the menu and it's absolutely moist, then the chef knows how to cook. Okay. Right, so I'm going to start plating this dish up now. So we've got the beige into the pan, and all we're going to do is emulsify this with butter. Emulsify means to thicken it, really. So we're just going to thicken it with butter, a bit like we're making a, a vinaigrette. So very, very slowly. We're going to mix the butter in. Again, that'll add a little bit of richness, take off the edge of the acidity, but you've still got that acidity left on the plate. Okay? So I'm just going to do it like so. Take this out of the way. Sorry. I thought I had a sink then, but I realised I had to pump it. It's like a pump action sink, so I'd probably be there for two hours trying to pump it in the sink. Okay, so I'm going to take my beige out. Have a little taste now. Make sure we've got the balance of acidity in the butter. Which we have. A little bit more butter, just to thicken it. This is an old technique called Monte au beurre, which we uh, say in France. It's basically it's thickening it, emulsifying the sauce. So it actually goes naturally thicker. So if you've got a hot sauce, take off the boil, let it go to a warm stage, and then add cold knobs of butter and mix it very, very gently. And what you're going to get, you're going to get a thick sauce. So, very technical term, Monte au beurre. Okay, I'm just going to pop that into the little bowl there, ready for the sultanas and the spring onion. And because that sauce is quite delicate, even though it's quite acidic, if you put the spring onions in now and the sultanas, all you'll taste is sweet sultanas. So, you want to capture that, you want to capture that sweet and sour. So, what I do recommend, guys, is once this is on the plate, sauce is on, it's going to go over here, first come, first serve. I've got ten knives and ten forks, okay? <laughs> Right, okay, so I'm going to start plating the dish up now. Take this fish off. Check, make sure it's cooked. It's nearly there. So I'm just going to let it finish off on the chopping board. So I'm just going to take it here. Take a nice little fish slice. I'm just going to pop it on the chopping board. So I don't like to carry on cooking anymore. Like so. Now, Again, home cooking, you don't want to use too many pots and pans, especially uh, if you're on your own. You're going to clean it up. You might do the half of the clean it. So, that butter in there, what we've cooked the uh, John Dory in. So, we're going to mix it around, emulsify the butter, and we're going to pop our radishes in. Radishes, we still want the crunch from the radish. So, we're not going to overcook it, we're just going to let it tick over for about a minute or two. Literally, a lot of people think you need to cook vegetables, you need to cook them for hours, you need to cook them for a long time. You don't. You just need a little cooking. Less is more. Less is more on the plate, less is more in the flavour, less is more when you're cooking things. I remember uh, being a child, you'd think Sunday roast would go on the day before, and you'd think, yeah, my mum's sitting in the back of the oil so I've got to be careful what I say. But uh, Sunday roast would go on the day before, everything would be uh, very well cooked. I think. Uh, yeah, the vegetables on before the meat, and uh, I think them days have kind of gone now. So, I'm just going to take this up very slowly. As you can see, I've added the samphire in with the radishes. We don't want much cooking on the samphire at all. And when we finish the samphire, we're going to add a little bit of acidity, a little bit of lemon juice, just to take away the saltiness and get the balance right. Okay. So, plating this up now, the John Dory on the plate. Can everybody see that? No, so we're going to move over. I'm going to get used to the stage. Yeah. 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 Fantastic, right. John Dory is going on to the plate. And then a little bit of vinaigrette. So you notice I am using a lot of acidity, but it's all well balanced. You'll see when you eat the dish. It's something that I was fortunate enough to learn when I was in France. And it's a, a good attribute to have, because a lot of people are scared to have too much salt, too much acidity. Okay. Right, sapphire is ready. I'm just going to pop the samphire onto the border as well. Just drain off any of that excess butter because we don't want too much butter on the plate. And as you can see from the cooking today, not a lot of butter. We use very little butter. It's not a thing that we like to use too much of. It's a very traditional French way of cooking, the lots of butter. But everybody comes, becomes a lot more health conscious and I think uh, using butter in moderation is good. 
but don't overuse it. Okay? So next is going to be the artichokes. I'm going to pull them off, pop them on the pot again. We've got the sapphire, finish with a little bit of acidity on the sapphire. There we go. Last second, if you add the acidity too much on the sapphire, it will lose its colour. So it won't look very pleasant at all. Now, if you wanted to keep it very simple at home, plate full of sapphire, a bit of fish on top, absolutely fantastic. But obviously, I'm trying to show off what we've got right here. Okay. We've got the nice roasted artichoke. Okay, and then I'm going to pop on some nice slithers, freshly peeled cucumber, like so. There we go. And then we've got the lovely red radishes on there. These radishes are homegrown by us as myself as well. So, uh, cucumbers homegrown, cucumelons homegrown, and the radishes homegrown. The only thing that isn't on the plate is obviously the uh, artichoke, the uh, fish, and the sampa. Okay? And then a nice bit of chondori on top there, like so. And then we've got these lovely little seashore herbs that I was talking about earlier. I've got a little bit of dressing on those. I'm going to pop them around the plate. So like I said, this dish here, what we're, we're doing here is a bit of a signature dish of ours. We've been doing it for at least five, six years now. And uh, yeah, I mean, it always works quite well. A lot of people say how really nice it is. So we've got the version sauce. Can really see the danger sauce? It's like a thick, kind of like a thick vinegar. Taste it. It will take a lot of salt. Just to balance out that acidity. Add a little bit of spring onion in there. Last second, as we said. And finally, a few sultanas. Like so. Now I've been a really bad one here because of. Okay. And then finally, as you can see, the sauce, very last second. Has everybody got the knife and forks ready? Yeah? Fantastic. And a nice little drizzle of sauce around the side, like so. Finish with a little bit of more fresh cucumber, just dot it around. There we have it. John Dory with Beju Sanfine Cucumber. Just before you all get up, we've got a couple of minutes for questions. Oh yeah, yeah. So if anybody's got a question for Ryan about Orwell's or the issues he's done today, or who he bought his polytunnels from. <laughs> Any questions? Why do we use modern salt? It's much finer, much more refined. Um, you can actually take modern salt, put it in your mouth, and eat it without having that harsh salt on it. Molda, M A L D O N. Yeah, I think they sell it in the supermarket. Yeah, so it's beginning with W. Yeah, any, any supermarket around here will sell that. Okay. Okay. Also get the uh, also get the, uh, the smoke one, which is fantastic. Right? Yeah. It's really good. Yes. Yeah. Any other questions? We're going to let them lay down. No, we won't lay them. We'll let them back. Carry on for another couple of minutes. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, I would, yeah. I'd certainly do it on request if someone asked me to. Uh, so yeah, if you're, if you're in... sorry. How much notice? How much notice? Couple of days. Well, the, yeah, the day before because the fish comes in fresh every day or else, and we get it from the best supplier in the UK. So uh, Alan, who was on before, he probably used the same supplier as me when he was at Nautilus. Flying fish. Fly fly. Yeah. So Johnny got in the fly fish. Uh, he's the number one. So. We use him, uh, we use him, the, the manual presses on, we use him, uh, the water side, the fat dog, the list goes off, he, he is the number one. So yeah, so it's very fresh. Uh, what's your favourite sushi? Or sashimi? I have not enough to know, but I like quite a lot Yeah, fatty tuna is quite nice, that's one of my favourites, nice bit of raw tuna. We do do a dish at the moment on, at, on the Orwell's menu, but we do smoked aubergine with cucumber, uh, kind of like a tomato salsa, and that's literally uh, tuna that's just been seared either side, so it's just quite raw. So, yeah. <clears throat> Ryan, all these dishes are quite, as you said, chefy and, and quite 
um, high class. You do a lunch menu as well, don't you? That's a bit more accessible for people who want to pop yeah. up during the week. Yeah, I think the lunch menu is more about uh, coming experience a great value. So, so it's a lot less, less price than the other car. Great value lunch, and it kind of, it's like an insight of what we do. But it's dishes that people can reckon, you know, recognise. Yeah. And how much is it? Uh, £15 for two courses and 18 pounds for three. There you go. So, reasonably accessible for, for a decent public. Yes, yes. So, um, we've got our bodyguard down from Liverpool, so I think we can hit the crowd control. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you'd like to come up and taste this, then uh, help yourselves. But once again, put your hands together for Ryan and Simpson. So, in about 20 minutes' time, we've got Fran from Curry Club. Fran's running the stall in the corner there, um, and she's doing homemade, delicious Indian food in about 20 minutes. Thank you.